Onur Aram, who joins us also from Istanbul. Thanks so much for being with us. Uh, let's pick up a little bit on what Andrew was uh, saying there, because this is a big international story. Uh, there has been some criticism from, from parties abroad, and many of them saying, wh why do this? Why uh, interfere, in a sense, with a World Heritage Site? Because Istanbul already has a high concentration of mosques. Why is this important to Turkey? Well, it is the symbol of the Fatih's conquest of Istanbul. There's no doubt about this. Um, uh, there's, I guess, upwards of about 150,000 mosques in Turkey. Uh, none of them are as significant to Turks and to Muslims as uh, Hagia Sophia. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I, I could take this, I could take a number of different approaches in discussing this. I would like to take the most important one to me is that inheritance law is a very, very important part of basic human rights. This property happens to be the person on, was under the personal ownership of Sultan Mehmet, the conqueror. He has, before his death, he has in his will, has over, uh, has, has put this property, this mosque, into a foundation with the only request that it shall remain as a mosque for Muslims to pray till the end of time. So if for nothing else, this is actually today's decision, hopefully that will pave the path to make sure that there is prayers taking place in this mosque again after 86 years, is a is satisfying a basic human right, which is to fulfill Fatih's will on his own personal property. Right. So I, I think also, I mean, at the heart of this is that it needs to be understood for the, you know, three and a half million tourists that visit this site every year, that that doesn't need to change. There will, it will still, the doors will be open to visitors, to tourists, as they always have. That very careful precautions from what we're hearing uh, from Yusuf Adam there, uh, that there will be, everything will be protected. So basically this site I, will remain as it has for the millions of people from around the world that come here to see this gorgeous monument. Honestly, Andrea, I don't even know what the problem with that is. There is, as I said, as I said there's I think over 150,000 mosques and mischiefs in Turkey. I can't think of one that is not allowed to be visited by anybody, any tourists any faith yep. or anybody faithless. So uh, there is a very important mosque also Red right Cross from Hagia Sophia, Sultan Ahmed, or Selimiye Mosque in Edirne, or any other mosque. So I don't even know why, why this question is being raised, uh, raised by the uh, by the international community, uh, because uh, there has not been no case of at any point of history in the Turkish uh, Republic that mosques were not allowed to be visited. You know, Onar, it's, it's actually important that you, you point that out because I've spoken to a number of tourists who've come who visited actually other Muslim countries and have said that the reason they love coming to Turkey is because the mosques are open to everyone across the board. Uh, it's something that you don't see in uh, other, other countries around the world where religious sites are only reserved uh, for specifically for people of that religion and for specific uh, worship, while in Turkey, uh, it's really, the doors have always been open to everyone. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, great. Okay, owner, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you.